Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in to another episode of KNMRD Radio Stuff. Before we get started though, hit that little button down there that says subscribe. Also, right next to it, there's like this little bell thing. Click the bell, then you're notified when I make new videos. Stay tuned. So today I want to show you guys a product inspired by uh, the Smoke and Ape and I share a friend, a uh, guy, guy by the name of Stan. Now Stan's a very eager, ambitious person, uh, but he's also kind of a lid. And uh, he was talking to Ape the other day, was telling us the story. He's like, you know, he, the guy got his general. He wants to do portable. He wants a radio in the shack. He doesn't want to spend all his money. He wants a radio with a battery in it. He wants an internal tuner. He wants it to be portable. He wants it to be all band, all mode, all kinds of stuff. So we're telling him, it's like, dude, that's kind of realistic, but not really. You know, we were kind of looking at the, uh, at the G90 and the X5105 and we're like, yeah, those, those fit most of those bills one way or the other. The two meter, 70 centimeter part's just not gonna happen. But uh, you know, these are two good radios. So I reached out to my friends at MFJ. I said, Richard, what can we do for Stan to, to maybe help solve this problem? He said, that's a really easy problem. More power. Duh. So he says to me, he says, check out the XPA125B. Mayhap that'll solve your problem. Let's go find out. So just to take a quick look around, uh, this is the Zygu XPA125B. This is an HF through six meter linear amplifier, 100 watts, very easy to use. Um, you kind of just set it up and run it. Not many buttons to muck with. You've got your power button here. Uh, this PA button turns on and off the, uh, the, the power amplifier basically. This band button, you probably won't need to use, uh, but basically uh, if you have a radio that's they say other than an X5105 or a G90, if you use it with this amplifier, you'll have to like manually use that button to change the bands. And then you have your uh, tuner. There's an internal tuner on this. And it's pretty wide, uh, if I'm not mistaken. It should be able to tune up just about anything. So that's the front. The back of this, pretty easy. You've got your uh, port for your transmitter. That's where you plug your radio into from the coax. That is that goes out to your antenna. That's your power cord. Uh, it's got a I think a 25 amp fuse in here. A nice grounding lug, and that's the ACC. I think it's a six pin. Uh, actually goes from you got to use that uh, little interface. I'll show you in a second to actually make this work. But pretty neat little amplifier. In terms of size, uh, not very big. It's you know about a, a hand and a half. <laughs> Um, but pretty pretty lightweight and portable. I'd say it probably weighs four, maybe five pounds at best. It's got a nice little uh, carrying handle there. It's got four like really nice beefy uh, rubber feet there. So solid metal chassis. Like it's it's a it's a tough bit of kit. So inside the box, uh, you get obviously a box. It comes with an, with an instruction manual that I have since lost. Um, you get a nice beefy power cable. Uh, the ends are, they don't have anything on them when it comes, so we obviously put power poles on them, duh. And it also comes with half of the cables that you need. So this is the six pin connector that goes from the amplifier to the, you gotta have the CE19, this is the interface between the radio and the amplifier. And you can also use this like for digital modes and stuff. And then this comes with another one of these cables but it's eight pin so <laughs> you have to you have to keep them uh, in order there but that's everything you need so let's plug this up to uh, the x5105 and see what it can do for us so here's just a quick look at the back showing uh, just kind of how to how to set this up so i've got the coax from the radio going to the transmit side and then you plug your antenna into there now in, in this case I'm just going into a dummy load right now and then you have the two cables connecting to uh, the CE19 uh, and that's what allows the radio to talk to the amplifier because when you change bands on the radio 
the band on the amplifier is also going to change automatically. So the screen on the amplifier is really bright and it's washing out the camera. So I'm just going to show you guys what I'm using. Um, I've got the X5105 set up to the amp and I'm using this to double check the power going into our dummy load. And I also have the uh, PowerWorks watt meter. I want to see what kind of amperage we pull off of this thing. So this is actually what I'm using to, to like test this. Um, the amplifier itself does say how many watts it's putting out, but I just want to have the uh, external watt meter just to see. Let me show you a couple of features here real quick. So this power amp button, so now you can see this RX off, so basically it's in bypass mode. Now the power amp's on. This band, if you just push it, it doesn't do anything because we're in auto mode. you got to long press it. Now it's in manual mode, so you can manually go between the bands that you're in. So I'm going to hold that back and go into auto. And then the auto tune button here, you have either on or off. And if it doesn't tune your antenna for some reason, you can key up again and long press this and it'll go into another um, tuning cycle. Okay, so I've got the radio uh, in CW mode. So let's take a look. We're on 160. I'm gonna key up five watts into the amplifier. Uh, right now we're drawing about 0.3 amps, which is pretty incredible actually. I would have imagined this would have had a lot higher uh, just idle power uh, consumption. So that's pretty neat. So that's a plus for portable. It's not going to sit there and suck up a lot of battery just sitting there. So let's key this up and see how many watts we get out. So five watts in, 70 watts out. My external watt meter says about 74 watts out. So pretty, uh, pretty accurate there. Drawing about 15 and a half amps. So... That's not terrible, that's not 100 watts, but I imagine, I suspect that will change depending on the frequency. So I'm just using the hand mic to change uh, bands here. Notice we're at uh, 7580 now. So let's key up here. Oh, it's 79, 80 watts. The external meter says 86, drawing 13.6 amps. Let's go to 40, see what that do. 90 watts, so that's pretty good. External says 96, pulling 14.96 amps-ish. So here's 30 meters. 84, 82, 83, says 88 external, drawing 13.94 amps. And this is CW, so if you're on sideband, you're not gonna draw that much current either. Here's 20, 97 watts. External says 104, pulling just uh, right about 12 amps. 17 meters, 97 watts. External is about 102 and about 15 amps of current draw. 15 meters, 97 there, 101 on the uh, external and about 13 amps of current draw there. So that's pretty much the same. 12 meters. 98, external is about 101, about 13 and a half amps of current draw. 10 meters. 91, 88, 89, 90, external says 87, and about 11.8 amps uh, current draw. And then let's try 6 meters. 77, 80, external is at about 75 and 18 amps of current draw, so six uh, is, is uh, sucking the juice up. So that's not terrible. We didn't really see quite the 100 watts that we were hoping for and expecting, but from putting five watts in and drawing really about the same current that uh, your 100 watt radio would draw, that's, uh, that's not too bad. So uh, I'm gonna hook this up to my uh, off-center fed dipole now, and we're gonna test out how good the antenna tuner is. Okay, so now we've got the external antenna on, we have a real antenna on. So I want the tuner on now because my antenna ain't resonant on 160 meters. Um, so I'm kind of curious <laughs> what this will do. So just a short press of the tune button turns the tuner on. So we've got the power amplifier on and we have the tuner on. Let's see if it'll automatically uh, tune and let's see what happens. All right, so it's not putting out anything. It wants to, so if we hold the tune button for a second, it's trying. 
Did we get a match? We did. <laughs> we're putting out. Uh, we're putting out 56 uh, watts. I'm getting 85 reflected. It says on the external. So uh, definitely not efficient, but that just worked. So we can tune 160 meter uh, on a on a 40 meter off center fed dipole. So that's pretty cool. Uh, let's try 7580. See, it should auto tune though. So that's kind of weird. Nope, doesn't want to do it. That's all right. Hold the button down. That's not a big deal. I think I found a match. Yep, there we go. So that says 77 wa uh, watts out. What are we drawing for current? 13.8. Getting uh, quite a quite a high SWR on the other meter, but. Um, the SWR on the X5105 says about 1.8, so the radio's happy. My coax is probably warming up a bit, but uh, it's working. So, like, this would be great for, uh, like, a 9 to 1, my Pac-10 a Mini or something, hook that stuff to it. Uh, let's see, so 40, 40's kind of resonant, so um, putting out 87, let me turn that off, 90, so let's see if we can tune it anyway. Just for giggles. Yeah, 85. So, I mean, it's a resonant on this frequency, so, or on this band. So that's pretty, uh, pretty much expected. Let's try 10 meters now. Not much. So, yeah, apparently you got to do that. that. You shouldn't have to do that. I don't know why uh, it's not just kicking in. But it's tuning up a wet noodle, so SWR in the radio shows 1.2-ish, putting out 90-some-odd watts. Uh, let's go up to 20 meters. 81, 80-ish. Let's do this, just for giggles. SWR is like nothing on the radio, so. So it's still putting out about the same power. Let's go to 17 meters. Same thing there, so key up. Hold it down. My radio shows zero SWR, about 97 watts out, uh, sucking up about 12 amps. So here's 15. Oh wow, yeah, pulling about 12 and a half amps. SWR on the radio shows nothing. So that works. 12 meters. Ninety-six ish. SWR is flat on the radio, pulling about eleven point eight on the uh, amperage. There's ten again. Well, we're resonant on ten meters, but just for giggles, about the same on that. So here's six meters again. We're resonant on this band as well. So um, let's just try the tuner anyway. So, didn't really do much difference to the radio. Didn't really do much difference to the power out. Still get about the same SWR, same power outage. All right, so we've seen it with the X5105. But I also want to show that this does, in fact, work with the G90. So I'm just going to turn everything off really quick. Unplug a few cables. Hook up our G90. So, same cable that goes for the... Uh, X5105 is going to go into the G90, except upside down. Get a little coax action going here. Our power, and that's it. We're ready to go. So this is actually a really cool compromise, just like everything else in amateur radio. So this would be a really neat setup for, you know, that, that person that maybe just got their general or their extra and... Uh, are looking for a first HF rig, but maybe they do want to go portable. Maybe they also want to have a rig in the shack, but buying two different radios is, I mean, that's a lot of money, you know? Um, so any combination of the radios and the amplifier, you're, you're roughly like a thousand bucks. If you go the G90 
uh, that, that's like 450 and the amp I think is about 550 so you're uh, you're right there if you go to the x5105 you're gonna be a little over a grand but the bottom line is you have a portable radio that you can take portable and you parks on the air or summits on the air or play in your car or or go to the beach or whatever you want you have that QRP radio with a great antenna tuner and everything but at home you want to run more power so here's your power amp so you kind of get the best of both worlds it's like taking a 7300 taking the amplifier out and making it half the size and going out and playing radio so this this really is a good it, it fits a niche there's there's a market for this there's I could see people using this together if you want to go out in the park and run 100 watts well bring the amplifier it doesn't really draw any more current than, say, the 891 or the 7300. That you know, they're they're very much the same. So you could run all of this off of your 20 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery, um, or or a deep cell, whatever, something that'll handle that amperage. The most current I saw was about 19 amps, uh, and that's keyed down on CW. So like phone, you're not gonna hit that. Stan. I think we might have something for you, buddy. Uh, <laughs> so this, this could be a good viable option. So anyway, guys, just wanted to show this to you. I will be taking this out in the field and, and giving it a real uh, proper K8 MRD uh, run out there, but wanted to get a first introduction. It's been a while since I've done a review video, so um, I wanted to do that for you guys. And uh, yeah, that's about all I got. So thanks so much for watching. I really do appreciate you, and we'll see you again on another episode of K8 MRD Radio Stuff.